From Sportsnet, this is Making Coco. Growing up, nobody wanted to play goal. I thought the equipment looked cool. I watched Grant play. He wasn't very good. I said, I'm not drafting this guy. I don't block shots. We need a better goalie. When I'm at the rink, it was my sanctuary. He was never black to us. And once I'm on the ice, I control everything that I do. Listen, I've said it before, he's the greatest goalie ever lived. You don't win Stanley Cups without having a good goalie. We were lucky to have Grant to lead us out of that dressing room. One of the best goalies ever, and then one of the hardest guys to score on. The city lives and dies by the Oilers. I can see that grinding on somebody like Grant. It was revealed he had a substance abuse problem. Banishment from the NHL for drug use. He's always denied it. You're all of 20-some years old. You're not supposed to have chest pains and have panic. You play in the National Hockey League. But, hard time. You don't panic on the ice. That, of course, making Coco is the name. Uh, Grant. Hey, Grant, it's Mike Richards from Raw Mike Richards. Thanks for joining me here today. Appreciate it. No problem. How are things? Well, we just, we just showed the trailer. And I gotta admit, even you know, sometimes you see a trailer, you're not sure exactly if it's setting up what you think you're about to see. And they touch on so many issues about you know things that are even non-hockey for 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 Grant Fuhr. That you know, for someone like yourself, you know, when you're the subject of a documentary, a film, and it's going to be so heavily watched, when it's when it's said and done, when they finished it, and you saw the final thing. Are you okay with it? Is this is this what the, the message that you want to get out? And did it get everything out that you wanted? Yeah, I think we covered everything. I mean, that's kind of the life I've lived. So, I think that was the fun part of doing it. Is we got to cover the whole life: the good, the bad, the ugly, the fun. So, kind of everything. And you know, the, the one thing that comes up in in uh, in the trailer, and the one thing that they're going to talk about in the, in the movie, which is so so inherently Canadian, because I fall in this category too. They start talking about the Hall of Fame, they start talking about you, and they said, yeah, and the first black guy. And then you kind of, you kind of, you know, from wherever you're from, you're like, oh, that's right. I forgot. There's not a lot of places in this world, I don't think, Grant, where people just kind of didn't see the color. And look, I'm sure that's not your sole experience, because I know, I know you're going you're gonna to say otherwise. But for most of Canada, it was more about you than it was your color. Or, or do you think that's an inaccurate statement? No, I think that's a perfect statement. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing being north of the border is in Canada, they think of you as an athlete first and foremost, and color is not really an issue. I think once you get south of the border, then color becomes more of an issue than it's ever been in Canada. Did you did you have that growing up, uh, Grant? As far as you know, when you when you played outside of Canada, I know we we've, we've talked to PJ Subban on this show, and he's he's kind of echoed similar responses to what you said. It, in Canada, it's a completely different show. But you know what? You were you were playing in the states as well. You were playing on the East Coast, West Coast, everywhere in the NHL city uh, that that there is NHL city was was racism part of the 1980s when you were with the Edmonton Oilers at that time. I think it was more of an issue now than it ever was back then. I mean, also, I wear a mask when I played. So, yeah. I mean, whether whether that made a difference or not, but you didn't see a whole lot of it. I mean, yeah, you get the odd guy. You always get the odd guy sitting in the stand somewhere who's got something to say. But for the most part, I got, I got through pretty unscathed. Your film debuted at TIFF last week. We've heard nothing but rave reviews here in the city of Toronto. When people are watching this and listening to this uh, worldwide, uh, like we're getting a lot of responses right now on our on our YouTube feed, where can they find this documentary, Grant? And, and uh, it's, it's very impressive, and I congratulate you on it. Thank you. Um, once we get through the premieres, I got a premiere in Calgary coming up here on the 29th. Then we're going to be in Edmonton in the middle of October. And I believe they're aiming to have it released on iTunes, Netflix, 
and uh, video on demand somewhere early in the new year. Well, Grant Bean uh, for, for one of the premieres in Calgary. So, so Calgary people cheering uh, an oiler. I got to tell you, that doesn't happen a whole bunch. I don't, I don't. Yeah, not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It, it, I gotta, sorry, go ahead. I got to say, I was, I was pretty impressed that it actually, it's been sold out there for a month and a half now. So I, <laughs> that, that says a lot about the people of Calgary. Well, the great, great hockey fans, and, and as I said earlier on the show, I said, you know, the, in terms of even winning as goalies or save percentage or or the teams that, that had won Stanley Cups, I think for you, because of your circumstance, because of, you know, uh, even the, the, the teams that you played on, historically, you may have gone through more things with more great players on more great teams, the roller coaster, than almost any other goaltender I can think of because it's not a Patrick Wall-like story. It's not Rodeur. It's not It's not Bernie Perron. You had so much going on, and yet I think at the end of the day, uh, Grant, you know, with all that going on, because at times it must have seemed circus-like, uh, circus -like, you, you somehow held it together. So who gets that credit, or do you credit yourself for finding your way? Um, a bit of it's myself, but a lot of it's my friends, my parents. I mean, I've had the same friends grow since I've grown up, basically, and they've always been around through good, bad, ugly. So a lot of it's having good friends. A lot of it's just having good people around you. I, mean, I had fabulous teammates. Glenn Sather was fabulous. John Muckler was fabulous. So I've had a lot of really good people around me. If there are those that struggle, the younger guys that play right now, and, and let's say it is substance abuse, let's say that's one of the issues. Amongst many things, I think probably you know we're talking about depression, we're talking about a lot of different things. Do they reach out to you necessarily? Are you, uh, and are you open to something like that? Well, I'm definitely open to it. I mean, I've gone through it, so I know the good side of it. I know the bad side of it. I know the ugly side of it. And yeah, players, a lot of players are afraid to reach out to the league because you don't know what the league's going to do. I mean, yes, they've got some steps in place, but at the end of the day, they're still about the punishment side of it. So, unfortunately, players will reach out to somebody that's been through it. And I've had a couple of guys reach out to me, and I've coached a couple of guys that have been through it. So, yeah, I, I actually enjoy helping people with it. It's uh, it's funny when you watch the trailer, Grant, and you see Glenn Sather say uh, at the beginning that I didn't think he was that good. I kind of chuckle at that and I go, man, wow, because I, I flash back to one of my first experiences when I uh, when I became, a, 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 I guess, a, a media person and working in this industry. And Glenn Sather of, uh, I guess, I, I first met him in the late 90s and Ken Hitchcock were the two most intimidating people that I've was first introduced to this this field that I'm in today. Uh, as a coach at that time, what was your relationship with Glenn when you first joined the Oilers after being drafted by the Cougars in 1981? We actually had a great relationship. I mean, it was funny, before I got drafted, he came out to see two games, and both games I was awful. I think I got beat 8-1 and 9-1 in the two games that he came to see. So his first impressions probably weren't very good, but... I mean, he gave me a fair shot at training camp. I mean, I had no I, I didn't really think that I would stay in Edmonton my first year. I thought maybe I'd get a quick look and go back to Victoria, but he gave me a fair and honest shot to try and make the team, and everything kind of worked out pretty well. Well, I'd say it worked out pretty well. I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing the movie, as a lot of people are. Uh, as I said, you're, you're, you're very candid in it. You talk about a lot of different issues that uh, aren't necessarily just the hockey ones or your favorite game or your biggest save or the, the, the trophy you remember the most. And I think that, you know, when something comes down like this, for especially for Canadian fans and obviously very close in Edmonton, that uh, this is... Uh, this is a high point for you, is it not? This is this is maybe uh, it's not it's not a playing one, but it might be a pinnacle in terms of of satisfaction. I think it's it shows I'm comfortable in my life. I mean, life is you live life, and a lot of people kind of live a sheltered life and a guided life. I've kind of learned the hard way. You live life and you make some mistakes, and you got to figure out how to make it better. And I guess I've maybe done the mistake side of it a little more than most, but at the same time. Life's still great. 
Well, and, and I guess you got some, you know, I mean, someone I know very well, Theo Fleury, you know, has, has made a point of his life being available and, you know, the movie and the book and so on, but just letting people know that certain things out there exist. It's not the perfect world once you become professional sports. It's not easy or the gravy train that people necessarily think it is. And, you know, I, I look at, uh, you know, someone like Theo, who I, I'm sure, you know, you two have probably talked about many different things. We have, we've had a few conversations. It's funny, at 18 years old, they don't hand you a book on life. I mean, you go through school and that sort of thing, and school doesn't teach you how to live life. It gives you some basic necessities, but at the end of the day, it doesn't teach you about life and all the mistakes you can make and the traps you can fall into. So, I mean, you have to live your life and learn from it. Well, as I said, I'm looking forward to, to the movie. Thanks so much for joining us today. I know a lot of people are going to say, ask about the golf. Ask about the golf. So, the golf game, where are we sitting at, Granny? <laughs> are you sandbagging people? Are you taking money on golf courses? What's happening for you? Oh, uh, we're still managing to make a dollar or two. But, <laughs> no, I'm still playing the stretch. And actually headed to the golf course as we speak. Beautiful. <laughs> surprise, hey, surprise. Hey, is eh? the way light probably should be, Grant. Hey, you take care. Thanks so much That's for joining awesome. us. And we'll catch up with you again sometime, Grant. Awesome. Thanks, guys. That is uh, Grant Fuhrer joining us here on Raw. Mike Richards uh, heard also, of course, exclusively on Sportsnet, the Fan 960. That was a great time with him. Once again, when you see some of the issues that he's talking about, sometimes when these movies come out, Dave, that's why I asked, you're unsure if they want to talk about like everything. Like, do you really want to touch upon some of these really low points in his life? Well, just not unlike uh, Theo. Theo wants to show the warts. He wants to show you exactly what can happen and how it happens. So in that way, you got to credit him for being brave on this one because Amazing. some guys just don't want to talk about that yeah. stuff. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs>